cinema is replete with stories that cross genres. Revenge on both sides was ripe in the 1980s against those responsible for original sins. Be it Freddy, Michael, Jason, or Khan. Here is where a beloved franchise took a dark turn. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. The Enterprise is on a training mission when an adversary from its past has escaped their captivity and threatens vengeance that could rearrange the entire quadrant. Khan, who appeared in the first season episode, Space Seed, has returned and now armed with a starship, is focused on taking everything from the man who sentenced him 15 years past. Surely I have made my meaning plain. I mean to avenge myself upon you, Admiral. I've deprived your ship of power, and when I swing around, I mean to deprive you of your life. But I wanted you to know first who it was who had beaten you. This story has been said many times. Director Nicholas Mayer hadn't seen anything Star Trek related prior to this assignment. His approach was a fresh perspective with the freedoms from the constraints of television. Star Trek at this point had its place in family entertainment. The presentation here is more serious. The scenes with the eels is pure nightmare juice. But there is some degree of restraint. It could go further, but does enough to stay suitable for the wider audience. This was made in an era where some family movies did have some harsh moments. <laughs> In 2022, I reviewed 2001 for this channel, a well-loved movie that had some important horror moments that influenced future stars and movies. They didn't have to be connected to the horror genre, but had enough of the elements of horror to be added, like a vengeful person, whether alone or with followers who would do anything for them. We've seen people like this in horror before, but since this is part of a big franchise, if you look at it in the horror context, if you strip it down to its bare bones, you can see the parallels. Michael Myers returned after 15 years and didn't care who stood in his way. Khan isn't exactly Michael, but the lengths he's willing to go there is more than enough danger and suspense for it to qualify. We're seeing someone willing to kill anybody to get to this one person. I'll chase him round the moons of Nibia and round the Antares maelstrom and round Perdition's flames before I give him up. The things that happen off the camera that are shared by Chekhov and Terrell. The scene where Khan believes he's got the upper hand on Kirk. The satisfaction in leaving Kirk in what could be considered a futuristic oubliette. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left her. Marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet. Buried alive. Only to be outplayed, which leads to a final confrontation for the ages. make good movies better. Great scores make good movies legendary. 
there are many great movies where the scores aren't up to that level. One being The French Connection. Krull is an example where a great score can elevate a good movie. The late, great James Horner. You think of the many scenes that stick out in The Wrath of Khan. Someone will mention the score. The music, low, yet with a harsh beat. Until the close-up of the Reliant. Slow to one half impulse power. Let's be friends. And the anticipation of what's coming builds as Khan takes revenge, calmly waiting to strike. Ah, Kirk, my old friend. Do you know the Klingon proverb that tells us revenge is a dish that is best served cold? If you listen to the score, and like me, you'll hear the dialogue. It's almost as if the score was done first and then the scene was shot later and edited to match rather than the reverse. And it relents till the end credits. This is one of those moments where all the elements come together. Fire! Horner was a rising star, and he had a great decade. The pinnacle of which, possibly his career, being Aliens, in terms of Star Trek, his contributions are instantly recognised and appreciated. And he died way too soon. The movie was released in 1982, one of the strongest years cinema has ever seen. E.T. was the movie of the year and it absolutely dominated the American box office. So many great movies released that year and None of them could do half as well financially. According to Wiki, The Wrath of Khan had the biggest weekend box office opening the United States had ever seen and made his budget several times over. The response among the fan base was strong and the critics gave it a thumbs up as well. But what about those who didn't? Here's a one star review from the IMDb. The Wrath of Tedium. This movie has it all. Long and repeated shots of spaceship models, tedious dialogue between wooden actors, ridiculous action sequences, absurd science. This was truly awful. The opening 30 minutes are among the worst ever released by a major studio. And we're talking showgirls level bad. Are we watching the same movie here? I found the only reason to hang on till the end was the hope something, anything, would save it. Nothing did. The only surprise here is the franchise survived this absolute stinker. So much of the film relies on the audience's familiarity with the characters and forgiving abominations like the dialogue, the acting, the lack of anything at all happening. Seriously, are we watching the same movie? Star Trek IV had at least the interest of time travel and the prime directive on Earth to provide interest and even relatability. Plus a bit of an environmental theme. But there is nothing to redeem this snooze fest. There is not even the deliciousness. Oh my. No, I'm not reading that last bit. That, that feels disgusting. I've heard the argument over the long and repeated spaceship shots that were in the original. And my answer has always been 
under no circumstances watch 2001. Leave it to those who are open to enjoy. Of the 10 original movies, Star Trek II is the top of that list. And rightfully so, it's one of the best science fiction movies. And it does provide another reason that some sequels can surpass the originals. This is very unique in that it's the first of a trilogy. Genesis, a beginning. Life, death and rebirth. It goes full circle. Where the search for Spock does omit some pieces here, it does set up a great finale with the help of Nicholas Mayer. Full circle. Sir, our shields are dropping. Raise them! I can't! Where's the override? The override! Fire! Fire! 